Welcome. We got a very interesting build today. We're going to be combining a RGB LED, this part right here, and we're going to combine it with this part, which is a potentiometer with a little knob. You have to assemble if you haven't assembled already. It comes sticking in this uh, little bit of foam to protect the legs on it. And we're going to combine these two, um, and we're going to get the uh, potentiometer to control the RGB LED using if statements. And I think it'll come out real nice, and we'll have a fun little project. So, first off, assemble your, if it's not already done so, assemble your potentiometer with a little knob in there so we can sit and turn it like that. And our RGB LED has the um, four legs. You can see them there. We shoot the right part. And we're going to do a slightly different build. Normally, we would probably send a resistor for each for the red, green, and blue. This time around, we're going to. Uh, make it a little different. We're going to use one resistor. We're going to hook it to the uh, ground wire. So we need just one 330 or 220 resistor. So if you'd grab that as well. And we're going to start with the build. So we needed a potentiometer. Oh, well, there's our RGB LED. Let's grab that. Let's just start with that, actually. We're going to throw it in. There's the cathode that's going to go to our ground. The red, blue, and green wires there. I'm going to put mine. Doesn't really matter. Let's just go right there. It looks good. And I mentioned we're going to do it slightly differently with these RGB LEDs. We're going to grab a resistor, a 330 ohm and we're going to run it off that cathode the long wire and then we're going to run this one into our ground but i'm going to make this entire row a ground so let's put it in there and let's make it black do a little color coordinating as we go and let's zoom in as much as we can to make it as clear as possible for you. So let's set up our our little ground rail here. Set it to ground. Let's make it black as well. All of our circuits are going to end up in ground. And while we're here, let's make one for our five volts. Let's pull the wire up and hook that to our 5 volt rail, make it red. Okay, so that way we can use this entire row. We're going to ground and we can use this entire row for going to 5 volt source. And we don't have to worry about those two anymore. Let's go back to hooking up our other wires. So this time around, we're only going to use one resistor. Before we had one for each of these wires. Since they're all going to end up going through. Uh, ground and we're going to be using these colors one at a time We're just going to put one resistor and send it to ground All right, these other three We're going to be sending using if statements and sending some information to them based upon how much we've turned that potentiometer so we're going to pick I don't know seven five six seven Let's grab this and go to Five, it's going to be this little overlap. Hope that's okay. Actually, let's start off with the the other red. Not to be confused with the red we normally use when we're going towards our voltage source. This one, the R, the G, the green, and the RGB. Let's do that at six. It's already green. 
and blue. Let's make this some blue. So RGB, that looks good. And so that's set up for us. Now we need our potentiometer. And let's put that in over here. Remember that what I have up on this Tinkercad is slightly different arrangement than you'll encounter when you plug this in because the wires on this, there's one in the back, that's our signal wire, and there's two up front. So this wire in the middle will be the one in the back, and these two, this one and this one, are the wires up front. So there's a slight difference. And I'll show you my completed build after I finish this one. You can kind of compare to see what I did. Alright, so it's the middle one, the, the signal wire, which I usually like to make yellow. We're going to be gathering information from turning this knob. So we're going to gather it over here, zoom out just a little bit, in A5. Or A0, let's do A5. And let's make it yellow. I like making my signals yellow. So from the user, we're going to gather information from how much they've turned this knob. And it doesn't matter which one we select, it's the symmetrical part. We can grab this one and we're going to send it to ground. I am going to make that one black. I understand that you may not have the wires to color code it like mine, and that's okay. I'm just trying to do it for clarity. So this one's going to be go to positive, and that's going to be red. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looked nice. So let me show you what I've got here. Let's switch to, I don't know if that works best. Can I hold this up? I'm going to be getting another camera soon, so I'll have just an overhead of this really zoomed in. So this is probably the last time I'll have to hold this up and try to show you. Let's see if I can get it a little still and... So you can see how my wiring compares to what we did on the Tinkercad. Try to do some rotating. And now you can just pause the video and look at it closely. I tried to do the same color coding with this. And I don't think I did a very good job. It looks like I missed the, uh, the green wire or it just looks black. Is it black? No, it's actually green. My green wire for my RGB is looks black from my perspective, but it is actually green wire. So pause that, look that over, see how it compares. I think this is a little more confusing looking at this. Probably in future builds I'll actually wire this with you probably do like a two-step I will do this first and then wire this with you with the other camera pointed straight down on it hey we've got some different wires that might even be nicer but we'll, we'll discuss that in another video all right so we've got it wired up and if we wanted to we could actually hook this up to the computer. Let's jump to our program view and enter some code in here. So once again, we're going to try get user input in the form of turning that knob. And when we turn that knob, we're going to get values from 0 to 1023. So we're going to break up that 0 to 1023 spectrum of numbers into three uh, chunks. We'll go from about 0 to 300. And if it's so if the dial on that potentiometer is somewhere between 0 and 300, we're going to have our, our LED turn, let's say, red. And then if it's between 300 and 600, we'll have it go to blue, no green. And then uh, from 600 to 1023, 
we'll have it be blue. That's going to be our goal. So we're going to use three if statements to break up that information that we're getting from the potentiometer to tell our RGB LED what color you need to be. So I would like to, to do some troubleshooting. We don't really need this part other than troubleshooting and kind of seeing what's going on together using the um, serial monitor. But let's hook it up. So there it is hooked up. And we need to gather some information from the potentiometer. Let's start with that. So let's declare a variable. Let's call it an integer. And let's use pot pin. Uh, let's make sure that's lowercase. This will be the value we get from the potentiometer. We're going to store it as pot pin. The computer doesn't know what that means. So we have to tell it it's going to be an integer. And now let's rapidly use it here in the next line of code. So pot pin. Now we're going to gather the information. We're going to read. We're going to analog read that value on A5, I think is what we had it in. So we're going to read the analog pin A5, and we're going to store it in the pot pin as an integer. So that looks good. Um, maybe at this point we should pause. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's check our wiring, make sure everything's going properly. Let's serial print this. Make sure everything looks good up to this point. I'm actually going to put in a little delay so that my numbers aren't flashing on the screen on the serial monitor really fast. Let me plug it in. So, put my USB there. Plug this into the computer. Hear a little happy sounds there saying it's hooked up. I'm going to use the tools. It found it nicely and it found the board. So we got a good port, we got a, the right board selection. Now we're going to upload this. Wants us to save it, let's call this potentiometer RGB. So we want to look at it again. We're get busy or something, we gotta come back to it. We can just save it as that. Of course we're not completely done yet. All right, give it a moment to look it over, verify, see if it finds any errors. Everything looks good. Let's open up the serial monitor, and we're getting values, so I'm going to reach over here and grab my potentiometer, see if I can lift it up so you can see a little better what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the knob, and I'm going to change it from one extreme, zero, all the way over, the maximum 1023. So that looks good. Everything seems to be working properly. We didn't test the uh, RGB LED, but we know the potentiometer is working nicely, and this bit of code we've got is working nicely as well. So let's proceed to add some if statements. So let's get rid of that. Now, if statements we've never used before, but they're easy, like most things we've been looking at. We just say if, if something happens, then do this. And we're going to put the thing that's going to happen or might happen in little parentheses here. And we're going to start off with if our pot pin value, if it's, let's say, below 300. If it is um, below 300, so in between, in between our parentheses, if the value readout potentiometer is less than 300, we wanted to do something. So what it does, we're going to put in brackets, an opening and closing bracket. Anytime we see brackets, it's always going to be open and closed, whether we find them in the loop or whether we find them in the setup. So what do we want it to do if it finds a, a pot pin value less than 300? Well, we would like it to turn the uh, RGB, let's say, uh, red. So we need to, let's declare um, a value for the red pin. The red pin, and I've forgotten what the red pin was. Mine is, I've got 8, 9, and 10, but I think, let me make it the same as what you just did. 
Actually, if you, no, I think I just confused you slightly because on, let me show how I confuse you and you just make a decision. On here, I did pins five, six, and seven. On my build, which I held up, I put them in pins nine, eight, nine, and 10. So I actually just have mine shifted over like this. If I can pick that, move it out of there. Come on. Yeah, let me move you right to delete you. Anyway, I think you understand what I did. It's not a, a, a big deal, but you gotta make sure you do this. If you build it with five, six, seven, then when you write the code, use five, six, seven, you know, seven for red, six for green, five for blue. I'm gonna use eight, nine, and 10, and it looks like I did uh, red as green. No, excuse me, what am I talking about? I did red as eight, I did green as nine, and I did blue as 10. So I'm gonna go with that. And I feel like I should pause this and delete these so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So my build that I held up had this one as red, this one as green, and this one as blue. Blue, where are you? There you are, okay. So now that matches what I held up in my hand. This is a little bit messier because I've got some wires crossing over. But all right, so I'm gonna base my code on what we see right here. So let's get rid of this. All right, so we need to have, let's do red pin. And I said mine was going to be eight. And we're gonna have a green pin. <coughs> green pin. It's gonna be nine. I'm looking down and make sure I don't mess this up again. Eight, nine, and 10, yes. Well, if you mess up, we'll solve it, right? And a blue pin is gonna be 10. So that looks nice. So I've got names for each of the pin numbers. So this would be really helpful because if you find you got a problem and we use the wrong, uh, you have it in a different pin, all we have to do is change it up here. In our code, we'll use these um, words, red pin, green pin, blue pin and we don't have to mess with the code at all. We can just change it up here, so that'll, make, that'll be real nice. All right, so what we wanted to do is an if statement. We wanted to turn the uh, red portion of the RGB LED on, so let's do that. Let's do a, if I can spell here, an analog right, and we're gonna take that as a red pin so that is pin eight, and we want it to turn on. So we're gonna do that. 255 will be um, the maximum voltage. If you recall analog writes, we enter in values from zero to 255. That's a um, one byte or eight bits is 256. And if we include the zero, it's zero to 255. So in other words, say it another way, Within these parentheses, we enter in parameters. A little review of analog right here. First parameter is the pin that we're sending information out of. And over here, um, this is the value what we want sent out. So that looks good. And let's turn the other ones. Let's turn the other one, the green pin. Let's turn that one off. If we selected values that weren't 255, say something else, we would have the same color, but it would be less bright. Analog right, blue pin. We will turn that one off as well. So we'll only see the red pin and the others we're not, we're gonna force them to not be able to see those at all. If we don't turn these off and we just keep turning things on every time we put an if statement in, then we're gonna have overlapping colors, which might be cool too, but I wanna have nice, distinct red, green, and blue depending on where our potentiometer is set. 
So that looks good. Now we could pause here if you wanted to verify this. And just for giggles, let's do that. We won't verify again until we get to the very end. But it's part of our verification. Let's put in a little statement here just for fun. Let's have it do, let's say, I am the green pin. Or actually, let's say I have to do this way. Let's say it's turn on the, no, let's do this way. Green light is on. How about that? That looks fabulous. So for inside of this if statement, uh, we'll go look on the serial monitor and it'll say green light is on and it'll be on. So let's go ahead and upload that. See if there's any errors. We'll test out one portion of our code. We have an uploading error. That's because I pulled my Arduino out. Let's put it back in. Now it's back in my computer. Let's double check our ports and try it again. All right, that looks good. Let's turn this on. Right now, nothing is happening. Oh, it's green light. All right, on mine, we've got me being with the, uh, let's see if I get it up here. You probably can't tell what color it is, but that's not green. That is definitely red, so I don't know why I wrote green on here. Because I told the green one, the red one to go on, but I wrote green down here. That's me thinking about three different things at the same time. Not a problem though. Hopefully it looks red on your screen. Definitely the red one's on. We told red one to go on. So that looks good. Let's actually adjust this while we're staring at it. It's changing and let's see if it goes off after we get, actually it's not gonna go off because we have nothing to tell it to go off. It's gonna stay on no matter what. Even if we're not, even if we leave the if statement, it's going to just stay on. So let's make a quick repair. Let's make this, let me set the board down. Turn that red because that's what actually came on. And let's finish our other two if statements. This time around where we want to, um, if the pot pin is less than, let's do 600. And this little symbol stands for N, so we want to check for these both these values. We want to be less than 600, but we also um, want to check to see if the uh, the pin is greater than greater than. Um, I actually got that backwards. Let's do greater than 300. So if the pop pin is less than 600 but greater than 300, what do you want? me to do. Mr. Computer says we want the red to go off, the green to be on, and the blue to be off. So let's speed this up a little bit and copy this whole thing. Paste it in here and make some modifications. We want that to be off. We want this one to be on. And this time around we want it to say green light is on and we need to do this one more time for the last set of values so pot pin this time around we're going to, want it to be um, greater than 600 so 600 it is and we need to bracket this off I've already copied and pasted this portion so it's in my clipboard I'm just going to paste it in again and that looks good, except I've got to make my modifications, of course. Now it's going to be blue. I really don't need this last line on here. I could just go without it. But I like to get as much information I can and then do, you know, a few unusual things. Recap some stuff we've done before, kind of keep throwing things into here so we don't lose our skills. All right, so that looks good. We have our closing bracket. Let's make that a little bit shorter there. This bracket goes with this bracket up here. That one right there. A nice little trick is if you click next to the bracket, 
it'll show you the um, corresponding bracket that goes with it or it thinks goes with it. Oftentimes students forget their brackets or they messed them up because we got so many of them here. And they're like, do we have a closing one for my if statement? Yes, there it is. Do I have one for this? Yes, there it is. So we can help find what bracket goes with which, with which bracket because oftentimes at the end you'll have, like we have here, we have two, but we can have three or four or five down here just stacked up and it gets a little confusing. So that's a neat little trick. All right, so everything looks real nice. Let's, uh, I've got my Arduino in the computer still. Let's upload this and see what we've got. I'll hold it up in a minute. I'm gonna verify that on the serial monitor we're getting a change. It's done uploading, let's open it up. So I'm reaching over and grabbing the uh, potentiometer and it's in the 430. So that puts us in this range and it's saying green light is on. So that's looking nice. Let's, let's increase it to above 600. Oh, we're going lower. Let's go up to above 600 and see if it changes. Look at that. So we went above 600 and now it's changed. It says blue light is on. So that looks fabulous. Let's go down and go below 300. And now it's saying green light is on. So that looks great. Now we're going to look over at my, my board here. Hold it up kind of in the corner. I'll do the same thing here. And actually let's switch to make it bigger. The colors don't show up too terribly well, but there's one color. There's my red, there's my green. And that is blue. Now they all look the exact same. And I'm gonna just pause for a minute. And I just, it came to my head. And I'm going to run to the back room and see if I can find this ping pong ball I got. I drilled a hole in it, and if I put that over the uh, RGB LED, it might come up a little better color-wise. So give me like 10 seconds here. I'll check it out. Okay, I'm back, and I had lucked out. I, wouldn't, I had about 50% confidence I'd find that. So, I am a little experiment here. I like your little experiments, little ping pong ball. See if it even fits. I'm just shoving it, the RGB LED into the end there. I wanted to see if it would get a better, uh, mostly for me, not for you. I mean, hopefully yours is working. Can I shove this in here while it's in my breadboard? Yes. Does it look? Even remotely blue, no. Well, we're on the words, maybe. Looks a little bluish. Let's shift to green. There's green, no. Well, it was a good idea. Probably if I turn the lights out. There's red, that looks kind of red. Green, doesn't look green. Blue. Actually, it's interesting because it's going green is probably deciding that's part of the background and Trying to get rid of it. All right, now I was worth to try. I think that was a worthy effort. Okay, so we are done. This has been a really interesting build. The code wasn't too complicated. A lot of ideas were just repeating over and over again. And as you can see, our potential, no pun intended, is increasing. With just little ideas, we can now do lots of interesting things. So we'll see you next time with the next build.